Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this video is go over one of our last data structures. This is gonna be binary search trees. Now, in the previous data structures, I've done this in two part videos, one being my actual slide review and another one being my code review. This one, I wanna add a third video where I'm gonna go to an online resource that has a visualization aspect of the data structures itself. I'll have that website linked and it's actually a really, really good resource and I would have used it in the previous ones if the data structures themselves weren't so simplistic, but I'll still have the resource and it will have access to the previous ones too. But I really want to use it for this one because in the nonlinear data structures, how things happen can be quite complex, especially when we get to more of the actual recursive parts of our algorithms. So expect a third part for this video series on binary search trees and then a follow-up will be ABL trees which is a special type of binary search tree which addresses a pretty big caveat that they have that I'll address later in the video but for now let's go ahead and swap over to the actual slides here we go and let's go ahead and start so we've gone over most of everything here and also here so these being the primitive data structures, it's very basic. And then move to non-primitive, we've dealt with linear being arrays, stacks, queues, and linked list. Nothing too special going on there, but now we finally address at least one part of the non-linear data structures, and that's going to be trees. These are some of the more common ones that we we'll touch on in a lot of data structures. And the reason here is for linked list, we use this example, is it's pretty versatile. It's just bunch of nodes that contain some data that point to each other. Now, you might see some issue here in the fact that this is just going to be a singly linked list, but in the fact that it's linear, that means if the data that we want is at the very end and it's singly linked, we have to start at the very beginning and traverse all the way to the end just to get the data that we want. That's not very efficient. That's actually pretty, pretty bad. Now, you might be able to address this by making this a doubly linked list and say add a backwards direction to it. And yeah, that gets around some of the caveats here, but now if it's in the middle and this is 100 elements long, we're guaranteed we have to have 50 traversals no matter what. But in a nonlinear data structure, what we'll have, for trees at least, is something like this, where each node has two potential branches for child nodes, essentially. Now, these are going to be ordered in some fashion that makes sense, so it's not just arbitrary data just being plopped anywhere in the data structure. So the typical fashion we have for binary search trees is the root node is going to have, let's say just some value here, about 50. So the left child will have to be less than 50, and the right child will have to be greater than, because in binary search tree nodes, the lived children are always less than the value in the parent, the right child is always greater than the value in the parent. So in this case, let's say we have 30 here. Let's do 70 here. That means this left child over here could be, say, 60. This could be 65. This could be 72. This could be 89. And kind of so on and so forth. I mean, I would do the same thing with the left side, but it's going to get a little bit clunky. And I have a visualization video plan, so that will probably illustrate it a little bit cleaner. And you can, I'll have a card in the top right that you guys have access to. But now, what are they? We've gone over linear abstract data structures, in which case we just have linked lists, stacks, and queues, where we have some more dynamic approach to how we sort our memory and our data. With pointers, we don't actually have contiguous data like arrays and vectors. We just have it anywhere in memory and have pointers that just kind of direct us where to go. With binary search trees, it's very, very similar, except for now we have multiple directions to traverse. And in this case, we only have two, being the left child and the right child. There are non-binary trees, binary in this case being two, left and right, that's the two directions we have, not so much zeros and ones. But we also have just regular trees, which could have pretty much any number of children. They're not as structured, so they're not as commonly seen. And then we also have graphs and hash tables which handle their data entirely differently. But for now, binary search tree, tree-like data structure designed to lay out data in a nonlinear fashion in an attempt to improve traversal times. 
over linear data structures. My traversal time, that's what I was earlier. If we have a linked list here with a bunch of data in it, and we want to get the data in the middle, we're guaranteed to have to traverse through every single node, even if we have to go both directions. Not every single node, but every single node until we get to that point. Whereas with a binary search tree, if we have a bunch of data here, just a bunch of nodes, and we want to, one second, I've kind of lost track a little bit of these bottom leaves. They're all joined together, left and right children, so on and so forth. And you can see it's going to continue on quite a bit further. Okay, not all they're going to have. Okay, there we go. So there'd be a binary search again. So we have just, there's a lot of data here. And maybe we want to get to this value right here. Well, since we know that the left side is always going to be less than the parent and the right side is always going to be greater than the parent, we have some pattern here that makes traversal of this very easily. Easily done. But I say we start at the root, go down right because what we're looking for is greater than our parent, our root. That's good. And then we get here. And now it's guaranteed to be less than. So we just do this. And so we've gotten to this node right here and just two simple traversals. And this is a very, very simplistic example. Again, I'll have some search and traversal stuff in the actual Illustrate video. So if this is a little bit confusing, then go ahead and go to that video and hopefully it'll make sense. But essentially the whole point is we want to be able to traverse through our data in a much more efficient manner. So, I've already kind of talked about how they work, which is the left child having index data less than their parent, right child having index data greater than the parent. Now, the nodes here, we always have to have some numeric value to deal with their actual index data, otherwise we cannot have the left-right relationship of the children being less than and greater than. But if we want to, we can also throw in a character so the node has some actual data outside of the numeric value. One way of doing that is like say a Morse code tree is something that you can do with the binary search tree. Now, the caveat that I mentioned earlier is gonna be unbalanced trees. So if we had something like this, this seems fine right now. Let's do like a tree here, here, the left node here, 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 and here. You see that this is not balanced at all because this left subtree on this side is much deeper than the right side of the tree. And so that's gonna cause an issue in efficiency if we try to recursively search through this. Now, we can address this with a different type of data structure, but for now we are not going to deal with that, so having an unbalanced tree for binary search trees is perfectly fine because there's a completely different type of data structure that addresses that issue. So, for this, nodes, the simple C++ classes, like all of our other data structures, this one contains some data, has to have at least some numeric data, and then at least two pointers. In this case for binary search trees, it should really only have exactly two pointers, unless you're doing something very different. But the two pointers that we need are going to be our left and our right pointers to our children. Now, we don't have to have a child for every single node, but we have to have the ability to add a left and right child to every single node. And then for our class, it's honestly very simple. We have some integer data right here, and then a left and a right pointer. That's going to be the pointer to our children, default constructor, and then a data constructor. And then this one has a degree function, returning some integer. So this is the first time so far that we've had a node that has an actual function. And this one is used to determine the amount of children that our nodes have. This is going to come into play later when we start trying to delete nodes. For now, it's pretty simple. The degree function just has a counter initialized as zero, indicating we have no children. It checks for a left child that says, hey, we increment by one because we found a left child, check for a right child, and then it'll increment by one because we found a right child. And then return that value of being zero, one, or two. So it's pretty simple, not too much going on. Now the binary search tree class. This is going to be more involved than our previous data structures.
because now we are adding in recursion and the way that I handle binary search tree is a little bit awkward at first but I start just by having this private variable the root so that just means it's the very first node at the very top and then you'll notice I have several private functions that all take in a pointer to an address of our nodes. This is going to be used to recursively traverse our tree. Some of them obviously are going to have some data for inserting, removing, and finding, but we have to have at least our next node that we need to point to to traverse to it. And then for Publix, we just have the basic constructor here and then a deconstructor and then we also have the insert and remove and then we have find in order pre-order and post order I'll talk about what those orders are towards the end but for now let's take this one at a time we're gonna start with inserting data so how we do it honestly it's pretty easy so first we're gonna start the written root now if there's nothing there then we just insert a node there. So let's say we want to insert a node with value of 46. So we start, we check our tree. Is there anything there? Nope, that's fine. Throw in a value of 46 here. 46. All right, next, let's say we want to do a value of 37. All right, so 37. So let's take a look. So if the data we want to insert is less than our current node's data, we should burst down the left side. So 37, 46, 37 is less than 46 go to slip child there's nothing there so we just add our data 37 so let's say we want to do 54 well that's going to be greater than 46 so we insert to the right that's 54 now let's say we even do something like say 42 so 42 we start at the root 42 is less than 46 so we're going down the left side but then 42 is greater than 37 so we go down its right side that's 42 right there so honestly, that's not too complex. Obviously, it will get a well. It's not going to get any more complicated. It'll get a little bit overwhelming as you add a lot of data to the binary search tree if you try to visualize it. So for now, this is going to be as far as I go for drawing this out. Again, going to have illustrated video that should hopefully have this in a little bit cleaner format. And then here we have our first public function. So this is going to just be a simple insert data. So like when I was doing insert 37, insert 42 or something like that, I was calling this function and then that function then calls our recursive function starting at our root. And then that will then take in this root node and start actually recursively calling through the tree. So the first thing we do so we want to check if our node is null. If it is, then we just create our data there, and then that's about it. So whenever we do this first, we have root come in. It says if root is null, then basically that node is going to be equal to our new data. However, if that node that we're at is not null, then we need to check the left side. And that basically says if our data is less than our current node's data, then we insert recurse. Whoops down to the left and then conversely do the same thing but on the right side if our data is greater than our current nodes data so nothing too complex happening here again recursion isn't too difficult to write however understanding is a different concept entirely so if the recursion aspect is a little bit difficult then hopefully the visual uh, video and that website in particular will help that. Now, removing data is a significantly more involved process, so this is going to be much longer than just two slides. Now, first we have to do is make sure the data exists at all. So first we need to actually traverse the tree to find it. Then, once we find it, we need to check how many children it has because the way that we delete the data is going to be dependent on the number of children it has as to not distort the binary search trees pattern a left child is less than the parent is less than the right child that is very very important there's going to be three types of deletions one if it has no children one if it has one child and one if it has two children 
and we can tell that by using that node degree function from earlier. Now, all that being said, we start with our public function, which is very, very simple. First thing we do, in this case, we're going to check if the tree is empty, because if there's empty, there's nothing to delete. So we just return, and we're good to go. If not, we'll begin our recursive call, starting at the root. And while this looks uh, a bit longer than everything else we've seen so far, it's actually more complex than it appears because these are all separate function calls. So again, when I say this is a more involved process, I really do mean it, but it's not too difficult. So let's just go ahead and do it from the start. So first things first, just like inserting, check if the node is null. If it's null, there's nothing there to delete, so we just return back up. However, if there is data there, then we're going to check if our data that we're trying to delete is less than that node's data. If it is, then we just traverse down the left side. If it's greater, we traverse down the right side. Very, very similar to our insert. That's going to be a very, very common pattern that you see. However, if it's neither of those, then that must mean that we found our data just by process of elimination. If it's not less than, and it's not greater than, and there's something there, then it has to be equal to. So, in this case, first thing we do, we find out how many children it is by doing int degree equals node degree. This is going to tell us how many children our current node has. We have three cases. One, if the degree is zero. Another one, if it's one. And a final one, in this case, if it's two. That's the only other thing that can be returned. So, let's go ahead and take a look at zero degree deletion just because it's extremely easy. So let's take a look at this. If we have a very simple binary search track like this. Um, I'll just do a 20, a 10, and a 30. And I want to delete 30. So if I look at this, 30 has no children. There's no nodes down here for it to contest with. So it is the end, it's a leaf. So if we delete it, this is still a valid tree. So in this case, just delete your node and then set that node to a null pointer and you're good to go. Now, whenever we have one child, this is going to be a different story. That being said, it's not too difficult to deal with. So first, we want to create some temporary node as a reference to our current node. Now, first we check, is there a left child? If there is, then we set our current node to that left child. And if there's a right child, then we're going to set our current node to the right child. And once we do that, that's going to complete a link that I'll show in just a second. But essentially what we're doing here is we're deleting the temporary reference to our original node and then setting that to null pointer just like we did with our zero degree deletion. So in this case, let's say we have, um, let's see, I had 20, I did 30, then I did 10. Let's say that this is going to have a 5. And so I want to delete 10. Well, obviously, if I just delete 10 right now, 5's got to link up here somehow. It's got to be addressed. So what happens is, at the beginning, I find 10, I found it. So I'm going to do some deletion. So first thing, I create a temporary node. It's kind of a reference to this. So it holds the same data. But now what I do is I take the node that's being pointed here so that this reference in memory is going to essentially become the next child. So this now is five, right? And well, tiny ways like this. This gets essentially drawn up here because now it's pointing to the right child instead of our original node. But our original node is still maintained in temporary node. So that's why we end up deleting temp and setting that to a null pointer. So now we delete the 10 and you see we have 20, five on the left side, 30 on the right side. Okay, so again, that is difficult to illustrate and that's another reason I have this video. The deletions are really one of the reasons I wanted to have the other third video. Now, for our two degree deletion, this is gonna be a bit more difficult because it is using a 
recursive call at the end. However, the aspect that has them for it is not always straightforward in the way you do it because sometimes it's going to use what's known as a successor and sometimes it's going to use a predecessor. And basically what that means is, let's so say we have that 30, a 50, a 10, and then maybe I want say 20, and then 40. Now, I'm so sorry how badly drawn these are. Now, if I want to delete 30, we notice that 30 has two children, has 10 and has 50. So we can't just easily delete it. We need to choose what's going to replace it. Is it going to be 20? Is it going to be 40? Technically, in this case, it could be either of them and it would be okay. Now, it's up to you to determine how you want to delete it. I'm going to be using a successor deletion because that is in line with the third video I want to do. They use a successor deletion, but really interchanging them is very easy. Now, let's take a look. So, first thing, create a temporary node, and it's going to be set to node right. So in this case, temporary node is reference to 50. Okay, now, while temp left is not equal to null pointer, we're going to set it to temp left. So basically we're going to traverse down the left children until we get to the last left child. And that is where we're going to stop. So in this case, the left child of our temp is 40. So now temp is referenced 40. Okay. So here we do node data equals temp data. So we just adjust this to 40. And now we want to do a recursive deletion or removal using the right subtree where we started of 40. So we'll just traverse down here, it has no children, so we just do a zero degree deletion which removes it. And that's pretty much it. So it's not too, too difficult in this case. It is a little bit difficult to understand because technically we could have done the exact same thing but change this node right to left and change these to rights and so on and so forth and we could have ended up with 20 up here. There's no correct way of doing this but I'm just using succession deletion. I actually had this as predecessor deletion previously but whenever I looked at the visualization website they were using succession deletion so I wanted that to be as one to one as it could be between what the code I've written is and what I'm actually going to portray in video is just so that there's no confusion but I also wanted to show that there's two different ways of doing two degree deletion and that neither one of them is technically wrong it's just down to whichever one you feel is more natural to you so moving on Searching for data. This one's pretty important because it's in the name, binary search tree. So these can be done in recursive ways and iterative ways. And as I said in my recursion video, some things are just better done in iteration than recursion. This one is kind of one where there's trade-offs and there's no technically best way of doing it. I'm going to be doing it recursively just so it's in line with the rest of my actual code I'm writing here. But if you want to do it in an iterative way, that's perfectly fine. So in this case, the left child less than the right parent, less than the right child is going to be absolutely critical for this, but it is going to minimize the amount of time it takes to search for our data over linear data structure based on that paradigm. So again, like all the other ones, very basic public call. This one, just like our deletion, we're going to check if it's empty because there's nothing to find if the tree is empty. So before we even start recursive calls, we're just going to say, hey, is root equal to null? If it is, just back out. Nothing to find here. You're good. Otherwise, let's start the root and see what we do. So if our node is null, we just return. Uh, return false, going back up the tree. However, if there is data there, then if data is less than a current node, we're going to traverse down the left side if it is greater than, we traverse down the right side. And if it's neither of those, that means we must have found it. So we recurse up with a true, indicating we found the data. Now, these are going to be if else. So we're not going to be traversing down left and right for both of them. Essentially, if it's uh, the node and we want to find, let's say, 
44. And this is 60. Obviously we go down the left side. Maybe this is now a 50, so obviously we keep going to the left side. But maybe this is a, say, 42. That means we have to go down the right side now, and maybe now we found our 44. So it's pretty straightforward. We have a single path to go because of the, less, the left side being less than, the right side being greater than. It's very easy to tell where we go in the binary search tree. So it makes searching for data really, really easy and really, really fast. But what happens if we want to traverse the entire tree? Because with doing, doing that with a linear data structure like linked list, it's very easy. You start at the beginning and you just go to the next one, go to the next one, so on and so forth until you get to the end. And you traverse through the entirety of your data structure. With nonlinear, that's a lot more difficult. And there's a lot of ways of doing it. And again, there's no incorrect way of doing it. There's some more appropriate ways depending on what you're doing. But for this, we're gonna look at three different depth first search algorithms to navigate our tree, post order, in order, and pre order. They're all essentially a variation of each other. But let's just go ahead and hop into it. So just like all the rest, we're gonna start with a public call. This is gonna be just post order root. We don't care if it's empty. If it's empty, then it's just gonna print nothing. And that's fine. But here, again, just like the rest, if node is null, then return because there's nothing to do. But for post order, let me just go ahead and just uh, illustrate this. So think about this in three steps. And what you do with your data is that determines which order you're in. So you're always going to do the left side first, then the right side, and some variation you'll handle the data. In post order, we do it after we have traversed both trees, both subtrees, left and right. So for post order, we do left side first, then right side, and then finally, we will handle our node. In this case, we're just printing it out, so no big deal. In order, notice that we are doing it in between the left traversal and the right traversal. And then for pre-order, we're doing it before the left and the right traversal. So I'm not really going to touch on the traversals too much right now. This is actually one of the best parts of the illustrated video because it actually does it in a very well understood way rather than me jotting down a binary search tree from scratch here and going through it because that would just get really, really messy and take a lot of time. So I'm not gonna bother with doing that right now. So hopefully this video has illustrated kind of what we use binary search trees for how they work to a degree, how some of the code works, how some of the recursive aspects actually work, and hopefully you learn something. So I want to try and get to AVLs after this because they do address a very important caveat of binary search trees, but I need to get to my code review and the illustration of binary search trees first, so we'll see if we have time. For now, that's gonna be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I'll see you later. Bye.